What's going on guys? Back with another day of harvesting, but before we head in to harvest, we're gonna come up here to the building site and give you a quick update. So as you guys can see, we got some chunks of concrete on the slats, and what these are, are the feeder pads. This is where the feeder is gonna sit on, and they got the forms around it, so this concrete right now is drying. They just finished up pouring 20 feeder pads on this side of this 2400 building, and then they're gonna move over to this side tomorrow and probably the other 20 that they need to do. The reason why we put feeder pads in our barn, one, you don't want a bunch of poop and pee in your feeder. You know, your pigs are eating out of that. You don't want any poop up in it. So if you put it up on a higher place, there's a better chance that there's not gonna be poop or pee going inside the feeder where they eat. And the other reason why we put feeder pads in buildings is you want to eliminate as much wear and tear on your slats as possible. So if it, if it requires you to put a slab that your feeder sets on so that they go up and eat out of the feeder on the slab rather than the slats, you want to do that because it takes a lot more time and money to replace slats than come in here and just put armor rock on these feeder pads. We do that every four years. So our feeder pads will go to bed. They'll start having some cracks or stuff in them and they'll start getting wear down because the pigs constantly go to the feeder. And um, we just put this product called armor rock on it and it totally buffs it right out. Feeder pads are done on this side. Feeder pads got to get done on that side. And also they set the forms for the center wall. Tomorrow they're gonna come and if everything goes right, they're gonna pour the workroom, they're gonna pour the center wall, they're gonna pour the next 20 uh, feeder pads, and they're gonna pour where the cistern's gonna need to go. And if they can do that all in one day, that would be awesome. It might take them two days. That's what the plan is for the concrete. That's a little update on how everything's going. Hope you guys are enjoying it. And with that being said, let's go pick some beans. See these? See that? These need to be on that. Okay, it is a great day. We're running beans. They weren't too dry. I thought they probably would be, but they're not bad. I got the old double door Parker. That's like the wagon that won't die because it's such a pain in the butt. But hey, you know what? For beans, it's good. So I'm going to go unload that. And then we got the piece of crap parkers. <laughs> we could get an upgrade on those. I have no sentimental feelings towards those parker wagons. They can go anytime they want. Come on. That's good. The wagons, they can go anytime. Uh, we were a little worried this morning when we first started cutting beans that the beans were going to be a little dr too dry because when if they're too dry the pod the beans sit in will just crack and your beans won't go into the combine so you got to make sure it's just at the right number as it uh, more moisture got into the beans we were good to go we're about at that 13 percent 12 and a half 13 percent which is perfect david just loaded this wagon up 650 bushels of beans uh, we probably got about 19 acres total left of beans and 130 or so acres of corn left. I really like doing corn more than I like doing beans because beans you do a lot of waiting, you do a lot of sitting. I kind of go and do other things while he's uh, combining beans but on the other hand it's kind of nice to sit around every so once in a while because corn I'm constantly going dropping wagons off. Some of you that are new to the channel might be wondering, you know, why don't we combine our corn? Why is this man named David doing it? David is our neighbor. He has about the same amount of acres as us. He cuts some combines for us. Obviously, in the future, we'd love to combine our own acres. We'd love to have a nice big old grain cart. But you guys got to understand, it takes a lot of money for those things. And we're still in the early stages of trying to grow the farm. And we want to spend our money as a farm, as an operation on achieving that goal as far as growing the farm rather than going and buying nice equipment. Trust me, I'm young and ambitious. I'm a 20 year old kid that loves farming. There's nothing more I'd rather do in this world than get in a combine and pick from morning to night. But I can't do that right now. And that day is coming, but I want this channel to not only be about 
us, my dad and I farming together and completing tasks together. I want this channel to be kind of a journey. I want you guys to see us from the start where we are now to where we end up. And I don't know where we'll end up, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be an awesome journey to see. And that that is what I want the whole channel to be revolved around. You guys seeing the process of us growing this farm together. And I think we're gonna do some awesome things. And eventually we will get a nice big old combine uh, probably an X9 combine, but it'll be 10 years older by the time we get it than it is now. But um, you'll see it. This will probably be my last load of unloading while David's combining because I'm starving. <laughs> I'm starving dad's grilling broth, jalapeno cheddar broth, bacon cheddar broth. Two best broths you can ever eat in your entire life. And uh, if you don't eat those kind of broths, I don't think we can be friends. Soybean harvest 2020 for this new farm is coming to an end. Like I said, we've got about 120 acres, 130 acres of corn left, and then that'll be it. Good morning. I'm bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, as you can tell. Our first freight truck got here last night. I think this is the load of feed system and fans from AP from Assumption, Illinois. So I'm gonna hook onto the trailer, load the skid loader, and then go up and have him follow me up to the site. Hopefully he's got a pallet jack. We'll get him unloaded. It's amazing how much we take backup cameras for granted because about everything I have has a backup camera on, except for Old Faithful. So you gotta do it old school and kind of have your dead eye on getting in the right spot to get back here. Like a champ, should have a chain. Look at that, I even have a chain. It's so rewarding when you actually put stuff back and then when you go to get something, it's actually where you thought it would be. That doesn't happen very often around here, but when it does, it's a very satisfying feeling. I'm not going very far. I'm actually not gonna chain the loader down because I'm just gonna drive up the road and I'll be very careful. But what I need the chains for is, I'm not sure if this guy has a pallet jack or not and if he doesn't we may need a couple chains to get his skids pulled to the back of his trailer so i'm gonna take two oh two long chains with me just in case No camera or feelings were harmed in the process of unloading that truck. You'd be paid by Sawyer, right? Yes. <laughs> we're gonna indebt him for a good long time. That's what dads are all about. There's yours. Well, I'm glad that's done. The stuff that we unloaded was for the feed line and the, and the fans that are gonna go in the barn. It took us a little bit of time, but we got her done. Glad that it's done. I don't know why we, we got this stuff now. Usually you get it a couple weeks from now, but, um, we got it, it's here, and when we can put it in, we'll put it in. A few cuss words were sent back and forth between Dad and I, but we got it done. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't bad at all. Wait till the feeders show up, that'll be the real pain. Yeah. 